This video is about King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, and the fake and artificial economic model, which is the United States and the West. Hey guys, it's Matt. I'm finally going to show you King of Prussia. This is a ton of video that I shot this summer, but if you can't see the video or you're at work, my commentary over top the video should work. All you're missing is endless stores and obnoxious consumerism. That's all you're missing. Just endless retail, endless restaurants, stores, buy, 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 spend, spend, spend. That's all you're seeing in the video. You're not missing anything. So the commentary might work for you after this first section. King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, about 25 minutes outside Philadelphia, up the Schuylkill or Shorekill Expressway, as it's called. This is the area where I grew up. I just thought it was normal that the entire city was endless retail, shopping, restaurants, and bars. I, I thought everybody lived like this. Look at this horse shit. Hey guys, it's Matt. I'm finally going to show you King of Prussia going on 202 uh, North here, 202 North towards the famous King of Prussia Mall, and we're going to see how all these stores stay in business. This is the weirdest thing. Speed limit 55. Nobody goes 55. Haven't changed it in 20 some years. I mean, not one person will go 55 on this road. I guess they just do it so they can get anybody at any time for speeding. Okay guys, setting out here, proving it's me, not Joe Rogan. Go a little bit into the right lane here, which I can't do because this guy's coming. Nasty pothole right there. Feel it? Well, you couldn't feel it, I could. Whoa, look at this ass wipe. Not milk one, Matt zero. Matt, that would be a good video, you just riding around bitching at people and road raging. Well, yeah, I agree. We'll do that some other time. Upper Murrian Township. I went to Upper Murrian High School. Have, there's the famous gigantic King of Prussia obnoxious sign. Guys, literally, the whole place is nothing but spending and retail and stores. Who knows how many hundreds of bars, restaurants, retail. I mean, it was the mall initially when I grew up in the 70s. It's like, oh, the King of Prussia Mall. Then it expanded and expanded again and expanded again. Then retail, little shopping centers started to pop up like diseased branches all out throughout the entire city called King of Prussia. Till today, it's one gigantic city of shopping, like being on an alien planet. So when times were good, I don't know anybody with a degree of common sense just wonders, how do these, all these places stay in business? When t and then there's something called the Lockadown Ademica. The Lockadown, it all stopped. So you're like, okay, half these places have to be going under. The way it was explained to me is, Matt, they do all their business between Thanksgiving and Christmas. It's all about the Christmas season, and people come down from New York and come from all over to shop in King of Prussia. And again, as you just drive these highways coming in and out, there's just stores. It's not just the mall. Stores, stores, stores. And then I returned, and there were a few things out of business. But after basically nobody spending a dollar, nobody going out for a year Okay, then they started to go back with their masks. I, I would the carnage here should have been tremendous. Ninety-five percent of it was just as it was, unaffected, you know. And I agree, the AT&T store or the large retailers, Target here, they're going to be able to weather the storm. They have a seat at the creepy table. But King of Prussia is, there's blind stores, there's shoe stores. I'm not going to sh even show you, I'm just driving around here. I'm not even going to show you inside the mall, the little kiosks, the pretzel company, Yankee Candle, all this shit. Of course, the big guys like Walmart, Bed Bath & Beyond, I'm just driving around here. Actually, somebody's driving me around for part of it, and I'm driving around in the other part of it. I said, i got to stop risking my life, get somebody to drive me around here. The KOP Diner. There's a lot of little shit in here, too. It's not just a FedEx store there. Trust me. So that's where the carnage should have been. 
but even the smaller retailers like oh a whole year with no customers no problem it's like a, it is to me it is a reality breakdown how just yeah, it's like nothing happened just drive back into king of prussia whole world was locked away it's bizarro i mean raymore and flanagan okay nobody goes in there it's this huge furniture outlet and nobody goes in there anyway <laughs> even before it seemed mattress warehouse even oh how many of those damn stores are all over the place i mean and i'm showing you also corporate parks here when it's king, king of prussia pennsylvania when it's not retail it's gigantic gigantic and endless corporate parks of which many of them do seem to sit 40 50 60 percent empty today as people are still working from home it's just bizarre the economic carnage should have dominoed if the the world and the financial markets and what they say on CNBC is true it's not the financial markets and the economy is run on a supercomputer it is 100 percent artificial it has to be or we would still based on locking everybody away we would be in 1929 the great depression times 10 and for the next 10 years it's all run on a damn supercomputer the capital grill how the it's a hundred dollars for a ham sandwich in that place how that place stay open jay alexander's restaurant what is that guys don't forget the main point here of course here's costco okay they're always gonna weather the storm they always have a seat at the creepy table but people would talk about king of prussia as like it can't support itself even in the best of times there's just too much shopping and it is not the ultimate people say well that's a destination to a degree it is i'm sure people come in from willow grove mall because maybe the willow grove mall shut down or they come down from allentown but Look, it is not the greatest destination because there's a Target 20 minutes away. There's a Walmart 20 minutes away. It's not like you have to drive to King of Prussia from Harrisburg or from northern New Jersey because you don't have local shopping. You got a McDonald's in your hometown. You got a Target uh, close by. So it's not just like it's destination shopping. It's bizarre. I can't explain it. I expected, look, I we we realize how fake everything is after CV but when C we didn't know how artificial the economy was truly before CV and I thought okay King of Prussia is done for when it happened in in the spring of 2020 I said if if this doesn't open up quickly and it didn't it, it didn't I mean nobody really fully went back to stores and things like that for almost a year I said King of Prussia is done that's what we say if we if you grew up here. It's a king of Prussia. It's just king uh, a h, Pr king of Prussia, king of. Pr that, you'll hear some maybe some as I pretend I'm driving myself around here in, in high school with a bunch of beer buddies in the back drinking beer, driving around the mall, cruising the mall. Maybe some of the old Philly accent will will come out <laughs> in this video. The old Bloomingdale's. I remember when they opened this separate section of the mall. The court was Macy's, Bloomingdale's, and some other. Um, gigantic department store. It was like a big deal. Here's Lord and Taylor. These damn de the department store model died tw 20 years ago. Neiman Marcus. Matt, it seems like every single department store in the world is there. It is. And they all are one on top of e each other. And you go in there in the summer, there ain't nobody in there. The damn salespeople run after you with free underwear. Just, here, try that. They'll do anything to get your business. Well, how do you stay in business, you people? A running joke in the area is, where's downtown King of Prussia? There is no downtown. It's just one mall after another, and then a branch off, like a tumor of some kind, and a branch off satellite shopping center. It hovers all around the mall. Like, there's not enough shopping in the mall. You have to have these little shopping center branches popping up. So where where is downtown? Shouldn't there be, like, a, a main area, main street? Or, there is none. What if somebody in a poverty-stricken village in Ethiopia or, say, Somalia saw this video? They wouldn't believe it. Would they believe it? You know, they have some mud huts. There's one guy that skins meat and dries beef and that's all they have in the whole village and then they see this it's like this can't exist 
This can't exist. Who the hell could live like this? You could show it to a village in Uganda. They wouldn't fucking believe it. This coming up is out of business. The Ruth's Chris Steakhouse is out of business. Unless it moved, it, that's, out of, that, that's where it used to be. I think there used to be a diner. They were so desperate to be set up in King of Prussia. They moved into where it, Ruth's Chris moved into where a diner used to be. But of course, there's a Morton's just about five minutes away. You need two places in King of Prussia that serve $140 steaks. This is that Wegmans I've talked about, the grocery store in the past, where when you first come in, it's like aisle after aisle of prepared foods or a bunch of hot wings or sliced meats or things that are going to go bad at the end of the day. But then you go in there at 11 o'clock at night and it's all still piled up and you're like, where does the waste go? You bring those same people from Somalia and Uganda and Ethiopia in there and they'd be like, no way, man, this cannot exist. I think the same way, like, is this food being allocated to people in need at the end of the day? Of course it isn't. There was the Nordstrom's Rack, and Ulta Beauty, we'll talk about that in a second. Nordstrom's Rack, like the Nordstrom department store isn't enough. You need these satellite stores all over the place for their surplus shit. But they don't, they're not selling any of it in the Nordstrom's main store. So then it goes over to Nordstrom's Rack. Anybody throwing the rubber duckies, I hear you as I'm making this presentation. Ulta Beauty, for example. These same names. Not, not every one of these names is this national. But many of them are national, like this Ulta Beauty. And you think, is this really a store that was started by an entrepreneur? You guys have heard me talk about this before. There's always probably a story on Wikipedia about the entrepreneur that started it up. But sometimes you get a sense, don't you? And I have no basis on this other than just pure assumption and studying the knot milk. But you get a sense, like Capital Grill, for example. You go look on Wikipedia. I'm sure there's a story. Who founded it? Maybe that's a bad example. Maybe There are real entrepreneurs that started some of these. But you get a sense it's kind of like all from the same Amazon.com or something. Don't you? Like GNC Vitamins, Ulta Beauty, all these ones that are that just they never go out of business. It doesn't matter how good or how booming the town is or how poorly uh, t the town is going financially. It's like if you could trace it that back up the river, oh my goodness, look at this. Half this shit maybe is all coming from the same damn company. I mean, it is not out of the question at this point, guys. But again, I'm sure on Wikipedia, every one of these stores has an entrepreneurial backstory. And the story to you is you too can be a rich millionaire if you just have an idea and you work hard and you trace it back. It's all basically Amazon owns probably every single store. And, not, and I'm not even saying Amazon. I'm saying the real not milk. Whatever is the old money, what's ever above Amazon. I'm, Amazon's small compared to what's really in control here in this place, in my opinion. There's a Starbucks coming up. In 1999, when I lived in San Francisco, there wasn't just a Starbucks on every single block in San Francisco. Some blocks had two, like this little kiosk thing and then a full store just like 80 feet away. Lifetime Fitness, this ultra mega complex. I don't know how much it is per month. There's huge swimming pools and all this shit they got in there. And then you think about King of Prussia, all these office parks that are like closing down or like ghost towns. There's nothing being produced. Let's go back to like economic theory as it was explained to you in high school in 1950. There has to be a reason for the town to boom or the town to build up. Are they taking oil from the ground? Are they mining coal? Are they a manufacturing, like Bethlehem Steel, all the raw materials are brought there and the manufacturing puts it into something that can become a bridge? Okay, Silicon Valley was the brain trust of enhancing the internet or computers. That made sense. It wasn't just about manufacturing. But in the case of King of Prussia and most of the United States, most of the entire West today, there's no root for the economic prosperity. It's just stores. Well, where's the money coming from initially? It's just being exchanged around. Well, how does that translate into growth? Where's the engine of growth or the raw material? It doesn't exist. That just proves how artificial. And I'm not even showing you King of Prussia in this shopping center, guys. This is the gateway shopping center, but one town over. So 
you have a thousand stores in King of Prussia, but you still need this gigantic shopping center just <laughs> just five minutes away from the edge of King of Prussia. And it just proves how artificial the entire West is. Okay, there'll be a pothole up here on the right. And you swerve a little left to miss it. There it is. It's been there for 12 years. Not a big deal, but you know, I could fix these holes myself if the state gave me a stipend. If, now here you get, you have to go a little bit into the right lane here, which I can't do because this guy's coming. Nasty pothole right there. Feel it? Well, you couldn't feel it, I could. I'll show you that clip again. I just want to show you this pothole. Here's 202 South driving home. Guys, you can't see how nasty this pothole is, but it's pretty darn nasty if you hit it. This thing has been there. I've talked about this sort of thing before. It's been there for, I'd say, 12 to 15 years. Now, 202 South and North is a pretty good road overall, considering how horrible the roads are in Pennsylvania. But see, it doesn't make sense. The, the state has no one. Like, I, I, I'll be done with this segment in just a moment, guys, but the state has nobody that can drive these roads once a year and call in some basic pothole fixes. The ones that have been in this little stretch between my house, 202 North and South, I don't go anywhere. I'm sure it's the same potholes have been at all the different parts for 10 to 15 years. They're the same ones. They're never, ever fixed. As I said, if they just give me $100 a month and permission to go out on the highway, run out there with a bag of asphalt filler at 2 in the morning, and I had the legal right to do that, I could do it myself. I, it just doesn't make sense how it's n these pot. I mean, that one is nasty right there. Never fixed. I, it's Matt. You're not going reality breakdown with this. I, I almost. Whoa, I am this almost. Asshole. asshole. Not milk one. Matt zero. That's what Ben says. That was a not milk NPC player right there, right in the middle of recording. Now he slows down. But I say that's a not nilk NPC <laughs> NPC player player right there, guys. It didn't look like much. It did not look that didn't look risky. It was. He has an entrance lane that is now it, it's going to nothing. He's next to me with I think it was a he with a hundred feet left to go, and he guns it in, instead of backing off and going behind me. He is he guns it. And his lane is running out <laughs> to get in front of me. It was it was much worse, trust me, if you were there in the car with me than it looked on film. Well, Matt, you should yield. No, he we were he clearly should funnel in behind me. There's a lot of room behind me. Not gun it when his lane is running out. All right, enough about my road rage. This is inside the mall. You're not missing anything if you can't see these pictures. It just looks like an endless, gigantic, giganto mall. But I like this picture here. It says Perfume Hut. Inside the mall, Perfume Hut, Le Croissant, or whatever. There's all these specialty shops, and you never see anybody in there. Now, I haven't been in here for years, and people say there are empty stores, and empty store stores are starting to show up. But guys, you have to realize how massive this was a connection of two mega malls. I mean, there's still hundreds probably of stores that are still open and many this one says golden goose on the left what the hell is golden goose like these specialty shops the untuck it store just has to be in the king of prussia mall and you walk by and there's nobody in there <laughs> there's nobody nothing's being sold hertzberg diamonds i've walked by that hertzberg diamonds my whole life i never saw one person buy a diamond how do you stay in business these specialty shops Matt, we come here for conspiracy. Get to it. Yeah, I, it's not like I have to try to fit that in. The whole world is <laughs> is basically a conspiracy. The whole world is is upside down, bizarro world. Nothing works the way we think it is. We may be wrong in our analysis of how it works, but it certainly doesn't work how your teacher in high school told you. So all these specialty stores, let's just get right to the point, the same point I made talking about this four years ago. Maybe it's one company. <laughs> Maybe it's one company. Oh, there's that the Blue Nile, that another diamond store where nobody shops at. Um, maybe it's one company. Now, okay, maybe that's going a little too far, 
but you understand my point. Oh, no, Matt, the perfume hut here, you can research it. This was started by an entrepreneur out of uh, Schenectady, New York, who started, of course, just selling perfume out the back of her van. Of course, it all starts like that. It's all the same stuff. This person went door to door. But you know what? Who It could be a facade. It could, it could all be made by the same set of elves from the North Pole and the guy that wants to be a dentist, it could all be basically the same corp, not everyone, but 80% of it, who knows, could be the same company or Amazon or who knows. I don't even think Amazon is legitimate. I remember living in Los Angeles in 1996, 1997, and all of a sudden the talk, oh, you got to buy this stock. This this company just came out of nowhere, Amazon.com. They were talking it up, and somebody knew it was going to be the next big thing. But all it was, when I, I was there in the middle of it in Los Angeles in 96, 97, I guess Amazon is from so Seattle or wherever it is, but they were just, at the time, just selling books, and it was online. So they had a better online way to buy books in the days in which the internet was new. Well, there was all this hype about it. Somebody knew something, but okay, well, how did they know they were going to be in the position someday to sell absolutely everything? And in the early days, the infancy of the dot-com era, nobody else could have kind of got involved. The, the, the hype around Amazon, if you're as old as I am, it was artificial, it was like this Amazon was slated to be what it was by the knot milk, by the creepy back table and the creep sitting around it. It was slated. We live in a gigantic script. They sell it to you as capitalism and entrepreneurism. And then even when that breaks down, it's crony capitalism. That just makes it seem like, well, it's real capitalism, but there's some problems with it. No. Um, what do you call it when it's a script? When, when 80% of it is a script. I really do believe that. Now, if you're an entrepreneur and you have a product idea, and you start a store, can your store go to two stores and four and five? Sure, okay? Sure it can. They want that. The more that happens, the more believable this whole system is. But just pause for a second. You're inner tuning fork. You're inner knowing. Each one of these companies has its own separate entrepreneurial story. Maybe Untuck It does. And the genius came up with the idea that a shirt should be three to four inches shorter. Well, that is brilliant. Uh, but I don't know if they all do. I don't think they all do. I think a mall is like a facade. I, if you trace the lineage of a lot of these companies, you know what I'm going to say? It probably all flows back into the same river or the same corporation. And there's probably something, of course... The old money, I believe, exists bigger than Amazon that put Amazon in place in the mid-90s and positioned it and knew exactly where it was going to go because it controlled the entire infrastructure. You know, our cousins, our friends would think we're nuts. Oh, it's all just entrepreneurism, Matt. This is capitalism, and you guys are out to lunch. If you're going to create an Amazon that sells absolutely everything, online, then you need these retail stores, the physical stores you walk into to be a facade. You can't have it both ways. See, that's what uh, our friends and family fail to realize, especially when times are not booming. You can't have Amazon that's, that people will use all day long and these Amazon Prime trucks all over the place. And my dad's even like, isn't that Amazon wonderful? We order something, it comes the next day. So even my dad, 80-something-year-olds are using Amazon, everybody down to five years old. But you still have all these retail stores that you can walk in at the same time. Something has to give. And what has to give is they want everything to be online, but this is almost like stalled century. No, the old world still exists, Matt. You can still go shopping. All these stores are out there. It could be as simple as that. Are all these stores a necessary element in the stalled century spell, whatever that is? If you're, if I'm, I don't know how this has come out, guys, and I, I think it's pretty clear, but if, if it's not or anyone's new, Again, I think that the main part was the last few minutes. You can't have it both ways. You can't have Amazon and other online retailers selling absolutely everything and have all the stores too. 
if the economic system is what CNB says it is and what your professor at your university thinks it is, and they're not lying to you. They're, they're as fooled as anybody, those, those professors that present what economics is in the, in the West and in this country. They don't have a damn clue inside their little academia how the economic world really works and where the money really comes from and how it's printed and where the money injections come from. These idiots still think the ECB and the Bank of Japan are making independent decisions from the Fed. Or it's all tied into the same damn Dr. Theopolis. What I'm saying is, if you have the Amazon and all these online retailers, and things were real, 80% of all stores, from your vitamin shop to the, uh, the underwear counter, would be out of business and closed at this point. To me, because they're not closed, it's a facade it's all one company, or it's all artificially injected. What's the difference at the end of the day? Thanks for listening.